So this joke is a bit of a deep cut. If you're under 18, you might not understand it, but uh, cue the music. We're doing a peanut butter episode. Uh, five dishes from five countries. So, you know the drill. Hi, my name is Hanneke. I'm from the Netherlands. The dish I'd like to talk about is called patatje pindasaus. Patatje pindasaus literally means French fries with peanut sauce. In my country, French fries are a very popular street food. There are quite a few condiments that I had been introduced to through this channel that I now love. Ketchup manis or sweet soy sauce is absolutely one of them. I use it all the time in marinades and on top of rice with eggs. It is so delicious. The flavor is so good. I highly recommend any of you look into having this be a part of your jar sauce oil collection. <laughs> because everyone has one of those, right? In the case of patatje pinda sauce, the french fries are covered with a generous serving. Yeah, a little spicy, that's okay. Of a peanut sauce that has a creamy consistency. The sauce is salty, slightly sweet, slightly spicy, but the star in the sauce, of course, is the peanuts. And usually to make it at home, we use peanut butter. The most commonly used peanut butter to make peanut sauce is the leading brand in my country called Calve. Unsweetened peanut butter is definitely not the American way. <laughs> For not being sweetened, there's still a natural sweetness to this. I actually like this more than American peanut butter. You can really taste the peanuts and the saltiness of it. It is slightly chunky peanut butter. It's not as smooth as American peanut butters are. And it only contains peanuts, a little bit of oil to give it a smoothness and salt. Um, okay, so this broke. As in the oil is separating out and you can kind of see the broken texture of the peanut butter. I'm not sure if that's okay. I tend to think it's not okay when you break things when you're cooking. If the oil is separating from the sauce a bit, this can happen from the oil in the coconut milk. Me. Add a few drops of water at a time and whisk vigorously until it is smooth. Okay, a couple drops. Where's my apron? Somebody made me this apron with my website on it. So professional. Okay. The peanut sauce gets its flavor from two ingredients that are quite popular in my country. It worked! Namely, sweet soy sauce, ketchup manis, and sambal, crushed chili paste. Both ingredients are not originally Dutch, they're Indonesian. Indonesia and the Netherlands have a long shared history because Indonesia 400 years ago was colonized by the Dutch and Indonesia has left a quite impressive influence on our national cuisine. The peanut sauce of course originally is also Indonesian. In Indonesia, it's mainly served with satay, which is grilled meat skewers. That's also a dish that is very popular. But in my country, we have decided to pour it over our french fries, which, in my opinion, is a wonderful combination. I really hope you're going to enjoy my patatje pinda sauce. I think it is a dish that the whole world should know about. It turns out that I have made this dish before, however, Number one, I did not make it with the authentic type of peanut butter and I didn't make my own fries. So I kind of went through the motions, but I didn't go through the work. So this time, it's all right, baby. Uh, which fry? These are long fries. I said that while I was making them. I do like how long they are. I didn't, no, I'm keeping them long. Fries and peanut butter are surprisingly so delicious. I love this sauce. This peanut butter sauce is spicy from the sambal and has like a bit of sourness and the peanut butter is really salty and peanutty and it's not sweet, 
which I really like. There's a really nice balance of flavors in this. And then when you add the mayo, yum. I think this is one of those really interesting recipes where you can see the history of how it came to be. And that's through the lens of Dutch colonialism. Obviously the Dutch are not known for quesap manis and sambal and coconut milk, but here they are. And food is this amazing lens to look at the history of the world through. And this is definitely one of those dishes. Potatoes are this interesting vegetable where you think, I know what I eat this with, you know, like potatoes and ketchup. Yeah, potatoes and butter. But then the world kind of gets a little wacky. And uh, you know, in Germany you have potatoes with applesauce and here we're having potatoes and peanut butter. And I just keep thinking, where's the line? Where is that one thing that you're like, no, that does not go well with a potato. And I'm thinking maybe that line doesn't exist. Maybe potatoes go well with everything. Like prove me wrong. Tell me one thing potatoes do not go well with, honestly. And speaking of sourcing peanut butters from all around the world, I would like to thank Rocket Money for sponsoring today's episode. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that will help you cancel subscriptions, lower your bills, and manage your personal finances better. Since starting my YouTube channel and having to source ingredients from all around the world, sometimes shipping them from around the world, I've had to keep a better eye on my finances. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it gets pretty overwhelming. <laughs> One of the best features that Rocket Money has, in my opinion, is their subscription canceling service. They will go through all of your expenditures and find recurring charges and help you cancel them within the app itself. This also includes signing up for subscriptions for things that I definitely want at one time and then I kind of forget about them. <laughs> Because you're doing all of the cancellations within the app, you don't have to worry about customer service calls, which can be very intimidating and I hate doing them and I never even want to be on the phone. <laughs> Rocket Money has on average to help save its customers $720 a year in subscriptions and total around $500 million in subscriptions have been canceled through them, which means a lot of us are paying for things that we don't actually want. They also have a budget tracker feature, which I find really helpful and one of the reasons that I really love this finance app. If you're interested in trying out Rocket Money, go to rocketmoney.com barrel and you can try it out there for free. I'm also going to leave a clickable link in the description for you. It's time to get jiffy with it. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, help. <laughs> can we leave that in there actually? Hello, my name is Marcela. I live in San Francisco, California. I am originally from Ecuador and I moved to the United States eight years ago. The peanut butter dish that I would like to present to you today is called corviche de camarón or plantain and shrimp croquettes in English. A corviche is a typical deep fried snack from the coast of Ecuador. It is made out of grated green plantains mixed with peanut butter and spices to form a dough. If you're making this dish at home, just make sure to prep all your ingredients beforehand. It makes it so much easier to flow through the preparation. Marcella said that you really should prep everything ahead of time, which I kind of do, but now I'm truly mise en placing the heck out of this recipe. It is then stuffed with seafood, shrimp in this version, but tuna is very popular as well. This is a question for the audience. How do you all feel about shrimp tails? Like if you're eating a dish and the shrimp is cooked and the hard little shell here, do you eat it or do you not eat it? Personally, I eat it. I like the crunch and you know, it's such a soft exterior, but for this, for what I'm doing, because I'm gonna saute the shrimps, I'm removing the tails. But overall, how do you all feel about eating the shell bit on the tails? The seafood, it is first saute with a mixture of vegetables and peanut butter to create a creamy filling. Then it gets folded into an oval shape and deep fried. It is served with a heap or an onion pickle salsa and some mayo. Cream plantains are one of the most common ingredients in Ecuadorian cuisine. Okay, this is so interesting because it's kind of giving me like peanut sauce vibes, right? But the flavors are so South American. It's, it's, this is very cool. This is very cool. Also cooking shrimp with peanut butter, what? What are we about to do? So that is starchy base mixed with a peanut butter flavor makes the perfect fusion of the flavors that I grew up with. I'm not here, I'm not here for a good time. I'm here for a safe time. 
This has been a game-changing gift. I swear by this glove now, and my fingers are happier for it. I'm having flashbacks to my dumpling episode when I made the plantain dough empanadas, and it was not good. My dough is unbelievably sticky, and I don't know what to do. <gasps> this is either going to be my redemption arc or another sad day. Every bite of the dish is full of peanut butter flavor. And with the seafood, the peanut butter flavor really shines. It is not the easiest dish. I will say it's a four or five and it takes time. Even in Ecuador, when you order one of them, they make it from scratch and fresh, so it might take half an hour for it to arrive to your table. And they already know how to make it. Is it done? Are we there? The palm is not your whole hand, like that's my palm. <laughs> I am an anxious cook. It's not that I'm not having fun, by the way. I'm enjoying this. I like the process. I just really want to do it right. I just want to do everybody proud. Okay, here we go. Four, wrapping in. God, come on, baby. Just do it. So it is okay if it takes a while the first time that you make it. This is a dish that anybody with a little bit of patience can make. I guarantee you have never had this combination of unique flavors and textures. It is fun and different. I think you will like it. Give it a try. <laughs> I think that these look so pretty. It has been the most surprising recipe to make and truly fits the bill of a peanut butter dish. I am very excited. I think, as much as I want to eat this with my hands, I do think it's a fork and knife thing. Can I? Ah, I could do it with my hands. Stop it. Get out of town. Arguably, this dish took a while. I think it took me almost two hours to make from like beginning to end. You know, we're filming, so it takes a little long, but it tastes like the labor. You can taste, I mean, I mean that in a positive way. Mm. I'm not kidding. This might be one of the best things I've ever made. Only because it is so delicious. I think this is, I've, I've never had this, but like how could this not have been perfectly executed? Everything about it is perfect. The outside is so crunchy. The inside is soft. The shrimp, I'm getting bites of shrimp in every single bite. The sauce that the shrimp was in, it is peanut buttery. It is zesty and tangy. You can taste the onions and the peppers. I mean, I definitely have plantain dough redemption. That's for sure. Deep fried food is, is amazing no matter how you slice and dice it. By adding the peanut butter and the pickled onions to this, it just like elevates it to a level that is unheard of to me. This dish alone is reason enough that I think all of you should try to find an Ecuadorian restaurant to go and have it at if you're not willing to do the cooking. If you are, get in the kitchen now. Just get in there and start making this. If you do, you will get something that is truly remarkable, will make you curious about Ecuadorian cuisine because I sure as heck am now. And just like, you work in the kitchen, you should enjoy where you're eating and this is a party. Love it. My name is Abir. I currently live in Geneva, Switzerland, but I am originally from Sudan. The dish I want to talk about is called agache. It's a thinly sliced meat skewered and coated in peanut and spices. It's traditionally made with beef, lamb, chicken, even fish is getting quite popular. I like Egeche because it feels like Sudan's homage to its African roots. Since the war broke out in Sudan last year with nearly 10 million people displaced, making it the worst refugee crisis in the world today. For many of us, our cuisine is a connection to our homeland, our families and loved ones. And Egeche is one of those core memories of family gatherings and celebration and city life strolling down night markets and your eyes and nose is drawn in by this 
delicious distinctive barbecue aroma cooking from the small grills on the sidewalks. This is a very interesting smelling marinade. And by interesting, I mean I want to live inside of it. Toasted sesame oil is one of my favorite scents. This one, it's expensive, but my God, it's so good. I love you. I also learned from a Brazilian fried chicken recipe about marinating chicken in citrus. It makes it so soft. So I'm excited. Agache holds very special memories to me. It almost became unanimous with celebration. Growing up, it was a staple at family gatherings and community events. And we have over 500 ethnic groups in Sudan. It's one of the most diverse African countries. So Agache is a piece of African heritage and fond memories of shared meals in the community. Peanuts or groundnuts are an integral part of Sunnese cuisine. Sudan produces about 80% of the world's groundnuts and it's a very important part of our culture. This is so interesting, like using the peanut butter with the flour. Oh, it feels, feels kind of good actually in my hands. There's so many amazing smells right now. This is like the ultimate coating for chicken. My God, I'm pumped. Sudan is a vast country and it sits at the intersection of the Africa and Arab world. It is the most agricultural land in the region. It's often referred to as the breadbasket of the world. Our cuisine is as diverse as the people in the land. Agache is an excellent example of this African influence and it's easily become the king of street food in Sudan. Spicy, savory, nutty, intensively flavored and highly addictive. <laughs> Pose with chicken. It's best enjoyed with generous squeeze of lime, sliced raw, white onions, and a sprinkle of more spices. If it were socially acceptable, I would have a gachet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. You definitely need to try it. Visually, I mean, it's beautiful the color on the chicken, the crumbliness of it. The smell is still so good from the start of cooking this to the end. This has been a delight to the nasal senses. I wish there was such a thing as smell vision Like, come smell my kitchen. This smells so good. This smells so good. <laughs> that is so surprising. That is also spicy. I had some sort of weird dissonance that just happened because visually when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is gonna be crunchy. It looks like fried chicken, but it's not crunchy at all. Like it's not crunchy at all. The exterior of this, while it is obviously like hard on it, it still has that very soft sand-like texture almost. It feels like a coating and not a crust. You can really taste the peanut butter. You can taste all of the beautiful spices. The chili is really coming through. It's totally different than anything I have ever had. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain something when you, you've experienced it only once. Let me experience it twice. Like what? It's so, it's so, what? <laughs> it's like how bread has a crust and the crust isn't crunchy, but it's still a crust. There aren't many times on the show where I eat something and I'm just like, what? This is right now. What? It truly feels like I have traveled somewhere with this dish. I, like the flavors and the textures are so different than anything that I have ever had that I feel totally transported. There's just so much to learn about in this beautiful world of ours. I love it. Hi Beryl, my name is Micah and I live in Pasig City here in the Philippines. The dish I want to talk about is kare-kare. Kare-kare is a peanut-based stew. It's been a subject of debate how the name kare-kare came about, but the most common iteration of its origin is that it is named after curry, after its resemblance to Indian curry. But kare-kare is not at all like the Indian curry. For this recipe, if you're not gonna use the Instapot, it will take around two and a half hours to get the oxtails done with this baby. Only 30 minutes. Love her. 
It has this thick orange sauce which comes from anata seeds. It is both savory and sweet and of course has a distinct peanut flavor from the peanut butter. The vegetables that we use are eggplants, pechay which is similar to bok choy, sitaw or green string beans, and finally, puso ng saging which literally translates to heart of a banana. I've thought about a lot of blossoms in my life. I mean, look, I'm not always thinking about blossoms, but have I ever thought about a banana blossom? I feel like a banana just always was a banana, which obviously it wasn't. So here are banana blossoms. It looks like a big artichoke. Okay, is that what you were expecting? This does look like a big artichoke to me. Can you eat this raw? Probably, it's just a blossom. Tastes like an artichoke, kind of. Like, do we see the family resemblance? Oh, kind of. Cool. Super cool. The meat that we usually use for kare kare is beef or oxtail. It is best served with steaming hot rice. Eating kare kare is quite comforting and it always reminds me of Christmases with my family. If you decide to make this and you're like, what do I do with all the extra snake beans? Cause you can't really just buy one snake bean. Go to my fermented foods episode, make the fermented snake beans. They are so good. It was definitely one of my favorite dishes. Yum. Hiya. In fact, many families have kare kare with their noche buena or Christmas Eve spreads. You go to any Filipino restaurant and you can almost be certain that there will be kare kare in the menu. I really dislike washing vegetables, All right, but th this one did have a little bit of dirt, so. All right, you're clean. The peanut butter that we use for kare kare is the one we buy from the Palenque, but Lily's peanut butter, which is a local peanut butter brand, will do just fine. You can't have kare kare without the peanut butter. It's what makes it unique. We don't really use peanut butter as the main flavoring ingredient in cooking aside from kare kare. This is the Lily's brand that I was recommended. Sweeter than American peanut butter. Very, very creamy. Wow, that is sweet. I was not expecting that. Okay, let's dump it in. I also think the contrast between the peanut butter base and the bagaong really makes for an interesting eating experience. I think you should try kare kare at least once, especially if you're looking into trying more Filipino food. It is both comforting and it offers something really unique. And although it is different from most mainstream Filipino foods, I think it's still distinctly Filipino. With that said, kain na! I'd like everyone to acknowledge that I'm using a metal spoon. You all shamed me into this. That oxtail is so soft. Oh my God. <laughs> like melts in your mouth. This peanut sauce is incredible. Definitely you can taste the sweetness of the Lily's peanut butter, which when I had it in the kitchen, I was kind of surprised by how sweet it was. I definitely would say if you're gonna make this, use a pressure cooker, otherwise it's gonna be annoying and long. If you've never had oxtail before, it is a very rich cut of meat that originally was seen as waste and was never sought after. Like you wouldn't see it in restaurants, you wouldn't see it in like fancy homes. Today, however, oxtail has been realized. Like people were like, oh, whoa, this is really good. And it's in tons of grocery stores and it's just a delicious cut of meat that just takes time to tenderize. It's working really working. If you want to remake this dish, but you don't want to order the international peanut butter, I just think you need to use a sweetened peanut butter. Not one of those all natural ones where the oil is separated. Like use Jiffy or Skippy or like one of those sweet style peanut butters. That's for the American audience. If you're not in America, find a sweet one. <laughs> all in all, this wasn't that much work. It was a lot of passive time and just like some cutting. So it's delicious, perfect for a crowd. Definitely a crowd pleaser. My name is Melody and I live in Las Cruces, New Mexico in the United States. The dish I want to talk about is peanut butter pie. Peanut butter pie is a frozen pie consisting of a crumbly graham cracker crust, 
a creamy peanut butter and cream cheese filling. Step one, this goes into the freezer. And topped with Cool Whip, which is an alternative to whipped topping. I love how indulgent this dessert feels, even though it's pretty simple to make. It tastes kind of like a cross between a peanut butter cup filling and a cheesecake. While peanut butter pie isn't exactly rare, I think that it's less popular now than when my grandmother made it back in the mid-century. A lot of the ingredients are pretty standard American goods that you can still find in most grocery stores. I think what's interesting to me about this pie is that it is not something I would ever try to make on my own. I just don't love peanut butter enough, but when Melody said that it's kind of a cheesecake hybrid, my ears perked up a bit because I freaking love cheesecake. So I think that, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm curious to see how I will like this. One of the reasons that I love peanut butter pie so much is it reminds me not only of my grandmother who taught me how to make it, but also all of the friends and family that she used to make this pie for. When my grandma passed away, I started making the peanut butter pie again for a close mutual friend so that I could keep her memory and her legacy of recipes alive. And I've been doing that ever since. In the beginning, I really wasn't sure about what was happening with the texture, but now it has like kinetic sand or warm Play-Doh vibes. It's really smooth. So I get it. But now we're gonna add Cool Whip. For this pie, you need the standard kind of American basic jarred peanut butter. You do not want to go for natural peanut butter or the drippy kind. I'm a fan of Skippy. <laughs> the original recipe calls for chunky peanut butter, but you can use smooth if, like me, you're not a fan of cold, soggy nuts throughout a dessert. Whip in the whip. It's just personal preference there. Peanut butter is the star of this dish because the moment that you bite into the pie, you're going to get that salty, nutty peanut butter flavor that pairs so well with the cream cheese. My grandma used to make this pie for her children when she was raising them in the 60s, right around the time that Cool Whip was invented. And its nature as a refrigerated or frozen pie was made possible because in the mid 20th century, that's when electric refrigerators really became a lot more accessible in the average household. So people started using those to their advantage in a lot of recipes. I actually decided that this should have a little bit of chocolate on it and I found this. So I'm just gonna like drizzle a little. So that way it's kind of like a peanut butter cup. I think it'll be good, okay. People should try peanut butter pie because it's super smooth, creamy, rich without being overly indulgent. I really wanna get it out of this. And so I'm like trying to cut it so that the final shot looks better, but it's graham cracker. It's just not that strong, but like I believe in this. It's been frozen for a while. I think I'm gonna go for it. If it breaks, I apologize, but I'm I have to go for it for the final shot. and it really highlights the peanut butter in the best way possible. <gasps> no! <laughs> ah! Wait. Oh, oh no. God. I bet Giada De Laurentiis doesn't drop her peanut butter pies. <laughs> I love sharing my grandma's recipes and going through the ones that are a little bit quirky, but still really delicious and accessible makes me happy. Let's just do a replay in slow motion of the pie flopping. <gasps> no! <laughs> as far as baking, or well, I didn't bake, as far as desserting goes, making a pie without baking a pie feels really great. The crust, I mean, I felt like I knew going into it that this crust had no structural integrity. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> and even though it was frozen for quite a while, it did not help the situation. I did see the major fissure in the graham cracker when I got the crust and felt like, meh, what's, who cares, it's fine. That, that doesn't explain me dropping it, that was just me being a ditz, but it does explain the kind of delicateness of the whole situation. 
It smells like, I don't mean to be the person who sniffs their food, but I think the smell of this is actually really nice. It's very peanut buttery. It does smell quite sweet. It's sweet. It's like tickles the inside of your mouth sweet, you know, like this always happens to me when I have really sweet desserts. Melody's right, there is a hybrid flavor here of cheesecake to peanut butter, which I really like. The Cool Whip, do you think that it's Cool Whip or Cool Whip? The answer is Whip. The Cool Whip. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Cool Whip. Commit to the bit. I'm trying to commit to the bit, okay. The thing about Cool Whip is that it doesn't taste like whipped cream. It has a flavor of its own. There's a little bit of that hydrogenated oil flavor that it's hard to describe, but when you taste it, you know it. It is so light and fluffy and airy, but at the same time, so impactful in flavor. So what the Cool Whip is doing here is it's kind of lightening everything, but also creating tons of sweetness. And for a sweet dessert person, I think the Cool Whip is great. For a non-sweet dessert person, it's a lot. I also think you could very easily make this pie with any other type of nut butter, and you would just get the flavor of that nut butter, so you could mix and match this with whatever you liked. I think sometimes it's hard for me with desserts because I have a very specific place that I like desserts to be in, but I also understand that arguably, this is a crowd pleaser. You put this out at a party with people, I promise you it will get eaten. The flavors of this are peanut buttery and it's sweet and it's light. Putting the chocolate on was like a really nice touch. It has all the trappings of a classic dessert and it was super easy to make, minus the creepy crazy crust. As always, the recipes are linked in the description along with everything else that I talked about. I'm leaving you until next week with two other episodes in our culinary universe, french fries and onions, and I will see you all next week.